What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and today I'm going to be sharing with you the importance of creating an effective system to improve your workflow. So what I'm gonna share with you in this video is something that you can implement into your school life, your uni life, or even just any personal goal that you're trying to reach. Before I get into sharing with you what I've done to create an effective system, I can't believe I'm saying this at all. I literally, when I got the email, I was like gobsmacked. But this video is so kindly sponsored by Notion. If you guys have seen any of the other videos on my channel, you'll know I love Notion to death. I literally rave about it to every person I know and tell them to start using it because I wish I found Notion earlier than I did. But that's besides the fact, I'm now glad that I have found Notion and have been able to implement it into my uni life to improve my workflow and just make things easier for myself to organize and also make sure I'm staying on track. So what exactly is so good about having a system? The dictionary definition of a system is a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network. So what's this got to do with studying? Well, this kind of came from a book I read recently, which is a very popular book. It's called Atomic Habits. And he highlights the fact that you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. So when it comes to studying and finding a perfect study routine, which I don't think there's any perfect studying routine, like mine's always adapting to either the subjects I'm taking, the circumstances I'm in, how busy I am with other stuff outside of uni. It's important that you have a solid foundation. So I'm going to be giving you this three-step process in my workflow that has helped me to stay on top of my work and be consistent, especially with online uni when things are a bit all over the place at the moment. I'm going to call these three stages the three P's. So the first one is to plan ahead and prepare. Oh, that was kind of two P's, but anyway. The second P is to be present and the last P and last stage of your system workflow for school is to put everything together, put your resources together and basically execute a little mental checklist of revision methods you want to have done after every single topic. So with those three steps, I'm going to be giving you examples of how I've done that to create a system on Notion and hopefully walk you through it in a way that's easy to follow. If you have now gotten up to this part of the video and you have no idea what Notion is, I'm just going to quickly share with you what it is. So Notion's basically, I would describe as an all-in-one workspace. It's kind of like a mini library with different sections. So you can create to-do lists, you can create trackers, you can create um, places to store your files. So what I mainly use it for is for each of my subjects at uni, I'll give them their own little Wikipedia page or whatever you want to call it. And in there, I will keep my revision trackers. I'll keep all my lecture notes. I'll create mini flashcards, anything related to that subject and the different resources and work that I need to complete, I'll put all in there. So if I'm going down to study, I will basically have everything in that one little app. So I'm just gonna show you how you can use Notion as a student if you wanna start implementing it. I know it's back to school season. It would be awesome to go back with this cool little tool that has everything. But yeah, this is something that would be great to implement at the start of your semester, even in the middle, it doesn't really matter. As long as you start implementing different systems into your workflow, it can help you tremendously. If you want to get started on creating your own workspace, the best part about Notion is that it's completely free. So if you want to sign up, use the link in the description. All you need to sign up is your email. If you want to use your EDU um, school uni email, then you just click the SSO thing I've highlighted here at the bottom and you can use that email to sign up as a student. So I know when I first started using Notion, it was a bit overwhelming and confusing just because there's so much you can do on it. But to make your life a little bit easier, I've made a template that exactly follows how I use it as a student. So if you want to use that, then you can click on the link in the description and just duplicate my template into your own workspace. And then you can follow along with my study routine and the system I've created to revise and go about my uni semester. And now onto the three stages of my systematic workflow. 
So the first one is plan ahead and prepare. So before you go to your lectures, you want to make sure that you're prepped. If you have prior readings to do, then you want to make sure you're doing those and you're including them in your either your schedule or your workspace. So for example, this semester, some of my physiology lectures require you to read these primary notes before you get to the lecture, so it makes more sense. So I've included those in their relevant lectures and make sure that I complete that before I attend the Zoom. So on my Notion workspace, I've set it up so you can plan and prepare on a long-term basis and also a day-to-day -day basis between each of your lectures. All of the long-term planning I will do in the revision schedule slash calendar at the top of my template. Wow! At the start of semester, you want to be planning ahead and knowing when all of your assessment tasks are. So to do that, I will just open up my unit outline, which is like my course syllabus and go to the assessments tab and then add in the dates in my Notion calendar of all my quizzes, practical reports, exams, stuff like that. It's important to be aware of when all of your assessment tasks are for each subject so you can plan ahead your revision and make sure you've covered all the content before it. One thing I like to do is edit the property of that page to a date so then you can alert yourself either one day before, one week before, the assessment task is due, so it gives yourself that little bit of warning. In terms of the more day-to-day -day planning, this is the stuff in relation to the content as you learn it. So if you go to the bottom of my Notion template, you'll see a section that says course content. So in here, I'll just write in my weekly schedule for that week. So if, for example, it's week two and I go to my course outline, it tells me I'm learning these topics this week. I can do my prior readings and also just get up to date with the stuff beforehand to make sure that I'm able to understand everything the lecture's going to talk about. On that course content table, I've also made the option to put in the topic name as well as the class mode. That way you know if you have practicals coming up this week, you might need to go over the lecture content So then after you've prepared, the next step is to be present. Receive his excitatory inputs. Um, receive lots of these. This one does seem quite obvious, but with online lectures, it's very easy to fall behind or get complacent and just think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, the day after, and then you realize you'll be heaps of lectures behind. So my biggest tip for online classes is just to attend any live classes that you have, just to give you some normality, but then also it'll help you to stay on track and keep up with the content as they teach it. And with being present, that doesn't mean you just attend your live lectures and leave it on in the background. You also want to engage as much as you can. So whether that's asking questions, writing notes, writing down any parts that you find difficult so you can bring them up in the tutorials. That way it'll make the next stages of your study routine slash system a lot easier because you'll know which areas to tackle first. Okay, so now on to the grand finale and probably the most important part of your system, and that is to create a mental checklist of things you want to do to revise for each lecture. As I'm scrolling to the far right of my table, you'll see I have a bunch of revision checklists. To add a mode of studying, all you have to do is create a new column, change the property type to a checklist, and then also type in that method. So for example, a summary page. So these columns basically show the four best ways that I found to study for this subject and put all the content together in my head in a way that makes sense and that I understand it. So this part of the system I would say is the most important because if you found the ways that you like to revise after each lecture, you basically have a little mental checklist of things you need to complete after each one and then you should be able to cover all the content in a way that will be effective and help you to memorize for the exam. So after I've attended the lecture and written my lecture notes, I'll import the digital iPad notes onto my Notion workspace by embedding it into that page. And then in that lecture page, I'll write my active recall flashcards. So to create flashcards on Notion, all you have to do is use the toggle list function. You can type slash toggle or use the shortcut little arrow key and then all you do is type your question and then underneath if you open up the toggle you can write your answer and it acts as a way to recall information 
that will help you to memorize and keep it in your long-term memory. The beauty about having this set system of things to do after each lecture is that you'll probably save yourself from procrastinating a bit because you know what you've done and what you haven't done. It also means that when you come to revising, you'll find you won't have as much trouble because you've kept up with a little routine of things that you do after each one and it helps you to stay on top of the content as it gets taught. Then during exam season, you won't be wasting time trying to collate all of your resources. Instead, you'll just be able to perform active methods of revision and also target the areas you're finding the most difficult, which is ultimately what's most important. The final thing I wanted to mention about revising on Notion is something known as Notion to Anki. This was something someone commented on one of my last videos and honestly, it's such a cool tool. I tried it out. What it does is the flashcards you create with toggle lists on Notion, if you click the three dots on the top right and export it as a HTML, you can import it into this website and export an Anki deck with all of your digital flashcards on it. This can be a really good tool because Anki has spaced repetition encoded into it. So you basically rate the difficulty as you try and answer the flashcards and it will set up the ones you find the most difficult to appear more often. However, the only issue I have with Anki is that when you create lots of flashcards, it can be difficult to navigate around specific topics you want to look at. So that's why I still use the toggle list function on Notion because it makes it easy to sort it by lecture and then have a look at the different questions or subtopics you've written in there. And if you follow those three steps, you'll have yourself a very nice study routine system set up that'll help you to stay on track and do well in the semester. If you try out this system and my Notion template, then please let me know in the description or tag me on Instagram at studycollab so I can have a look at it. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and also comment down below if you use Notion or not because we can share Notion templates and talk about it <laughs> because why not? Also, if you're new here and you like this type of content, then please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.